Craig Cameron, Gloves Red, delighted to be joined by the new European champion, Tommy McCarthy. Thanks Tom, nice for having me. How do those uh, how do those words sound? Brilliant. Um sounds great. Just I'm loving it. I haven't got these told it. Not the other I'd see the first person who said it to me, but I'd say the, my wife's the only person who's who's actually said those words, so feels weird. <laughs> uh, and where's the belt? Did you sleep with it last night? <clears throat> No, nah, it's down the living room. It's just, I've ch- had to pull it up, like, kind of out of reach of my kids because everybody wants to try and play with it and I haven't got a box for it, so yeah. trying to keep it safe, trying to keep it damage-free, flip <laughs> Um. So wh- when did you go home and how how are you going to celebrate? Are you still in lockdown over in Belfast? Yeah, I got home. I come home the next morning and... um. Yeah, we're in lockdown. We've we've been in lockdown the last couple of weeks in Belfast. School is not everything closed, so uh, well, my options are limited. The having the drink in the house to celebrate. Yeah. yeah. Have you had one yet? Did you have one last night? I ju- I just had. I was that tired. You know, after the fight, I never slept, and I just more or less a full twenty four hours no sleeping. So I just had one bottle of beer and then, well, I actually had a couple of bottles of beer and went to bed. Like, so well, um, just, uh, I haven't got the energy and I'm sore too. My hands are sore and everything, the all sore. Yeah. Um, so it was your first experience of the, the match in Bubble, Tommy. How how was that whole experience for you? Um, did you build any kind of relationships with like, other fighters and stuff like that? Obviously, you're bumping into them more often. Yeah, I really enjoyed it, but I think it's a... <laughs> It was brilliant for Fred Week preparations. I, I think they should keep the bubble going even post COVID because it was great that you didn't have people coming in annoying you. And then sometimes when you're on Fred Week, you know, like when family and friends come around, they want you to call and see them or people want you to go out and you know, go and get pictures. No, but you have the excuse, oh, I'm in the bubble, I can't leave. So it was great that like, you couldn't get disturbed. And, um, yeah, uh, me and me and Dave Allen got um got friendly, you know. But I have been a fan of Dave Allen for ages, and it's the first time. Yeah. This, well, that week was the first time I'd seen met him in person. A lovely fella, and uh, all the boxers actually who were, you know, because it's you're all like they're the only people who you can associate with. So everyone was sound as a parent, like Hannah Rankin and. Or I already knew Savannah Marshall anyway, so it was good to see her again. And who else was in the bubble? Uh, talking away with Big Tazor and David Hay. Every, everyone, they're all, everyone was sound. Like, you probably know us doing this this show. You'd be hard pressed to find a boxer who isn't sound. Like, boxing people are all, like, they're all gentlemen. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I, I couldn't agree more. But um, yeah, it's, Tommy, it's funny, like people, all the boxers that I spoke to, like I spoke to, unfortunately, was um, disappointing what happened with Cash Farouk and Craig Dixon. So I spoke to their trainers, but they did like the kind of bubble experience, I suppose. It, you know, you, you are getting focused, you're not getting any distractions um, and you're all kind of in the same position. Uh, you know, you've got a fight coming up, but um, it's funny you mentioned Dave Allen. So I interviewed Dave Allen in Glasgow and because he loves Iron Brew, I bought him a glass bottle of Iron Brew and the first thing he done was uh, ask me for a hug. <laughs> so he's a, he's a he's a big guy, eh? He's when you see oh, him. He's, I'll tell you, he's just such a genuine, nice person. and I was gutted for him because yeah. he, he uh, his fight got called off and he was livid. Like, he was he was really pissed off about it. Yeah. So, it was, no, it was a nightmare for me. He actually ended up doing a guard's corner on fighting it. Yeah, the German, German boxer he's yeah. became friends with. Um, <laughs> uh, so I seen that um, Peter Fury put out a tweet yesterday. How, how did that make you feel? People giving you, you know, that well, stature, like, I get, Also, like I, I know Pete from the last few years. So um, it's good that he had, no, like it's, it's good for my, my uh, profile. 
because I have a lot of relationships with high profile trainers, you know, like behind yeah. the scenes, and that people would know of it. And Peter would be one of them. So for him to put it out there and give me the plaudits, it's like makes it people's ears prick up a wee bit. Yeah. Um, and another Pete that, you know, you were singing his praises in terms of what he's done for you is, of course, your trainer, Pete Taylor. Um, Tommy, what, what, what's the kind of biggest thing that Pete's done for you? Pete, it's hard to really explain in, in layman's terms, really, but... He's just, he's a guy who studies boxing. Like his whole life, his hobby and his passion and his job is boxing. And he just spends every minute of the day studying different techniques and different training regimes. And he's always learning. And he, he knows how to get the best out of his boxers. Like, so he's just, because he has so much knowledge and anything he tells you to do works. And, he, and you know he's putting in the work. He's not just, he's not a bluffer. It puts confidence, it puts my confidence in him that yeah. I know what he's saying is going to work. So it's just, um, he just takes every box as he wants in a coach. Yeah, great. Um, Tommy, something I wanted to touch on was resilience. I, I think it's, you know, um, it's something you definitely have. You've, you've had, you know, a few bumps along the road with, you know, what happened in the, the Olympics and, um and not being able to go there and losing to Richard Riakpour. And I think you had a big deal potentially signed with an American promoter that fell through as well. So, you know, what, what's kept you going? Did, did you ever think, you know, I'm going to chuck this, can't be bothered with this anymore? Or what's kept you going and now you, you sit here as a European champion? Um, since, you know, getting, picking up the title and even just getting the opportunity to fight for this title, people have been mentioning about the resilience and the, the strong will and stuff that I have, but I never, um, I never even picked up on it because it's just I never felt, I never felt like things weren't going my way. I always felt like things were going in my favor. It's not until I look back, even you just saying that about the American deal falling through and the the Olympic, the stuff that happened in the preparation before the Olympic qualifiers and the react poor loss that this all the time I've been going these wee setbacks are setting me up for something bigger because some all those bad things that happened our people highlight them but good has come out of them you know on the other side so um, I've always had a positive I'm always positive I'm, I never dwell on the bad because something good always comes after that's, that's the, the pattern that I've noticed in my life and I think that's for all people's lives yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but it's just great you're you're sitting here now as European champion, and you show everyone else it's you know there's other boxers maybe in difficult positions just now due to COVID and maybe not because getting a fight, etc. A lot of boxers will throw their head up when things aren't going their way. Yeah, and um, I'm not the first boxer who's grinded it out through the tough years. It, boxing isn't a quick get rich fast champion without doing any any work. All you know, the Anthony Joshua's of this world, they really worked their balls off and had the... I'll use Joshua as an example right now. I don't know him personally, but he came to boxing late. So the shape that he's in isn't by accident. The success that he's got isn't by accident. Because he's came in late, he's worked twice, maybe three times as hard as his counterparts. And, and that's why he's got the success. It, you don't You don't win belts by doing nothing you really have to really put the work in and yeah. Tyson Fury like those Fury had all land problems and um two years out of the ring and he came back and he worked his balls off and and to get back on top but you have to actually be willing to work yeah no absolutely that's a good point you're making there Tommy and so since signing with Mark Dunlop and MHD Promotions um, what what have they done for you, Tommy? Were you signed previously to MTK? Was that right? Just for it was only just for a year, just to be. Yeah. Um, I was with them, and I thought, I, th I thought that it was gonna you no know, kick off because everybody's with MTK, and I was like, yep, I'll um be able to get some opportunities, but um the opportunities was weren't there for me in MTK, so mm -hmm. uh they let me go and. I signed with Martin. I was I was actually when I left MTK, 
I was planning on managing myself because I says if I if I can't make it happen with MTK, the the biggest you know uh, managerial company in the world in world boxing, yeah. like nobody can make it happen for me. So when I when I split from him, I got loads of offers from different people, and Mark sent me a message and he says, uh, "Look, I'll let you talk to whoever you want, but come and see me after." And then I says, Mark, I'm going to manage myself. He says, no, that's, that's crazy talk. So when I went and spoke with him, I outlined what my dreams and ambitions were. And he told me what way he would work. And um, everything he said, he's, he's stuck to. And everything yeah. I've said, I've stuck to. Brilliant. Um, no, it's, it seems like a successful partnership, obviously, and things are going well. Um, so the big kind of matchroom, you know, fights, you know, you were over in... Italy and then the other night as well. Is that something you want to be a part of moving forward? Most definitely, because that's the level I'm at now. And like I said, it's two back-to-back, two big fits. Um, in Italy, I was top of the bill. That was on the Italian Sports Network and The Zone. Uh, yeah, and the fight before it as well, I'd done an eight-rounder, but that was on a massive show in Italy, in Rome. <clears throat> Um, yeah. And that was on the zone too. So from Rome to Trento, the Wembley, they're all massive shows. Like the pay-per-view, Usek to Zor, there's nothing been bigger this year so far. Pay-per-view event. So um, that's, you know, that's where I can't go back the way now. Yeah. So yeah. I wanted to stay here, yeah. Yeah. Um, and a name I'll mention, someone else that's, uh, been on Sky shows in your weight classes, uh, Chris Billum Smith. Do you think, Tommy, that that's a, a fight that, that will happen in the future? Well, if Chris Billum Smith was the, well, he, he's got Bryce Taylor fight. Like, if he was the get up the ranks and, you know, get on the world level, but yeah, but definitely. But really, I want the world title next. You're like, I've won the European title and, I don't want to go back the way. The same way I don't want to go back down the crap shows. I don't want to go back the domestic level. I want to push on with my career. And the fact that I, I said it on TV, I want Maris Breedis next. Obviously, any one of the art champions I would take. But Maris Breedis, he's the, he's the six-figure fighter in the weight. He's the number one. So that's where I want to, want to go. Great, great, Tommy. And something I wanted to ask you about as well is, uh, so I've interviewed the two Tyrones a couple of times. What's it like uh, having them in the car and the way down to Dublin and uh, having more time with them? Because I know you're close to both. Yeah, um, when they when they came, because uh, I joined Pete before him, but must have been about eight months before him. So when they joined the team, I was buzzing because obviously we've came through. The, the Irish team together from our kids so it was great to, to be back all just like like being on the junior team again yeah so um we'll spend a lot of time with each other anyway like uh, away from boxing but it was great to have him back in the gym and just the buzz it was like old times it is like old times yeah I hope you don't uh, get involved with our dares that they done when they were over uh, here oh. in Scotland you got a bit out of hand. <laughs> like, see, from ever, these two's always been doing pranks and silly shit, and I've never been involved in it. I'm <laughs> just to take a back seat because they're just yeah. two balloons, uh, always <laughs> trying to do each other. Just so I just let them let them do what they do, and I just yeah. sit back and watch. No, that's uh, I think that's a sensible thing you do because you don't want to be walking about with one eyebrow or half your uh, head shaved, Tommy. Know. So. Um, but no, Tommy, listen, I just want to thank you for taking the time uh, to speak to us. Um, we we're delighted at Club Z that you became European champion, massive fan of yours. So it's been great Thanks to speak man. to you for the, the first time. And um, I'll let you get back um, and enjoy your, your daughter's birthday. I hope you, you all have mom. a great day. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right, Tommy. All right, right you take you. care. All the best. Bye, bye.